Okay, folks, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Live from the Sword Coast podcast. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly dungeon user this evening. Um, tonight, uh, we are not going to be playing uh, the Traveler role-playing game uh, campaign, the uh, Pirates of Drinax that we normally play on uh, Wednesdays, because I am leaving for vacation tomorrow. But uh, I did get a call from my friendly local gaming store, the Sentry Box in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, that my copy of the Great Rift uh, box set just came in for uh, the Traveler 2nd Edition uh, role-playing game uh, published by Mongoose Publishing. So I thought that, uh, well, A, I mean, I knew I was going to go pick it up, and uh, I thought that I would do an unboxing uh, video for it. Um, one thing I did want to check beforehand, though, is I want to confirm that we're actually streaming, <laughs> because we have had issues in the past before with, uh, I start the, the stream, and then it does not, um, it doesn't actually uh, stream. Let me just quickly check and make sure Whoa, that we are live here. Uh, the um, what I'll do while I am um, fussing with this is uh, I'll let you know what the, the Great Rift is about. So in the uh, Traveler, this is a supplement for the uh, second edition of the Traveler role playing game published by Mongoose Publishing. Uh, it is a setting book or a setting uh, supplement in the same vein that the Pirates of Drenax uh, box set was, which I've, I've also uh, done an unboxing for on the channel. Um, this is uh, carries or covers a sector of space that is uh, adjacent to the. Um, okay, it looks like we're live, so that's good. Um, that is adjacent to the Trojan Reach, or Trojan Reaches. Uh, it's, it's referred to as two different things in uh, the source material. But the Great Rift is um, different from the Trojan Reach. The Trojan Reaches uh, or the Trojan Reach are sort of like this. Um, no man's land between two massive uh, uh, interstellar empires. There's the uh, Islan Hirate and the Third Imperium, and then in the middle is sort of this this no man's land, which uh, had a several um, now defunct uh, kingdoms or, or empires that were uh, you know that made up the area. There's other uh, powers in there too, like the Florian League and the uh, uh, gosh, what is it? The Glorious Empire, I think it's called, uh, which is an Aslan group, but. Um, but really, it still is occupied. Like there are people who are there. The Great Rift is is very different. It is just a massive rift, uh, or massive rift. <laughs> the terrible explanation. It is a massive place of empty space. Um, normally, in, in in the setting for Traveler, one of the conceits that sort of makes this system or the setting work the way, uh, or the setting work the you know, um, is that. Uh, jump engines that, that all the different races use can only go a certain distance. I believe it's the maximum is like six parsecs. And what the Great Rift is, when they do the, the jump after six parsecs, they have to go in and refuel. But what the Great Rift is, is an area where there's just a massive ga uh, you know, gulfs of space where there is no refueling depot, where there's no you know, established bases, there's no uh, gas giants, there's no systems that have a gas giant that you can you know use your scoop fuel scoops to, to pick up the necessary um, hydrogen or whatever it is it, it's used and then process that that stuff to make the next jump it's just a giant empty space so um, that's about as much as what I know about the Great Rift actually um, I have uh, uh, I have purchased this in the PDF as well too and I gave it a quick flip through but I really didn't dive into it mainly because my, my ongoing campaign is uh, is set in the Trojan regions so I I didn't feel the need to dive into it but it's um it's, I, I'm really interested to see what's in this, uh, and I'm glad I've got it for my vacation so I can really dive into it over the break to um, to see what, I mean, obviously, if there's this much material in there, there's got to be some interesting stuff that's going on in the Great Rift. So uh, so let's see what's inside it, though. Uh, I, I'm not going to do a review of what's inside or what the contents are necessarily uh, because, I, like I said, I haven't, I'm not familiar with it, and I'm assuming you don't want to sit and watch me read it. So uh, let's see what's inside the box. Um, Okay, so one thing that's interesting about this is that uh, it's different from the Pirates of Drenax uh, box set and is closer to the Traveler starter set that you can get. Uh, unfortunately, I've got that packed up tick with me because I've got a hot date with Traveler over my vacation. Uh, but the Pirates of Drenax, actually both the Pirates of Drenax and the starter set are, uh, are all packed up. The starter set is like a traditional box set like what this is where it's got you know the lid and uh there are books inside it the pirates of drenax is sort of a deluxe slipcase thing instead and uh, i don't know i mean like i i the pirates of drenax books are just amazing it's, it's one of my favorite products i've i've purchased i just love those books i love how they look on the shelf i i love referring to them um 
but I mean, I, I guess not every supplement needs to be like that. And uh, let's think, uh, what I suspect as well is this may require more maps than um, than what Pirates of Drenax does. So that would be more difficult to do in a slip case than it would in a box set. But the uh, cover art is, um, I, and I don't know what kind of ship that is just because I'm not familiar familiar enough with the classes of ships, but it's kind of cool seeing that ship with what looks like giant fuel tanks adrift in a giant empty void that's very evocative. Let's see what it says in the back. The last great unknown in chartered space. Only the boldest dare venture into the depths of the great rift, crossing the abyss of empty space to find unexplored star systems and forgotten wonders. Deep in the great rift lie ancient mysteries, strange alien races, and human cultures who have not seen off-world contact in centuries. Portside rumors speak of giant creatures capable of interstellar flight and a starship wrecks belonging to no known race. From the Cold War of the Islands Cluster to the isolation of the Boulder Field, the Great Rift is a place of varied and insidious danger. A miscalculated jump means a slow death in deep space, yet travelers are willing to take the risk. What awaits the intrepid voyager who finds an undiscovered star system or deep space object? What secrets lie within the Great Rift, hidden in the vast emptiness or forgotten by ordinary starfinders, star starfarers? There are great risks here, it's true, but with them comes the chance to be the first people in history to stand on a new world and gaze upon what no one else has ever seen. So that sounds pretty cool. What's inside, it says, is uh, book one, The Great Rift, uh, Traveler's Guide to the Great Rift, how to traverse it, and explorations uh, of the corridor sector and the rift span reaches. Book two is Touchstone and uh, Fawahisa. Uh, that's a, it sounds like a, Aslan word, so I may have butchered that, and forgive me for those who are really into their traveler lore if I got that wrong. Uh, continue exploring deeper into the Great Rift with the uh, um, Fawahisa and Touchstone sectors. And then book three is Reft, R E F T, uh, the worlds and peoples of the most populated sector of the Great Rift. And then the Deep Space Explorer's Handbook What is Chartered Space? Sorry, what is beyond Chartered Space in the cold void of the Great Rift? Push further into the night with this guide to deep space phenomenon and the spacecraft that traverse it, plus three giant double-sided posters. There you go, so three posters, uh, that would be uh, easy to, to get ruined if it was in a slipcase. Um, double-sided posters illustrating the sectors of the Great Rift and the mysterious uh, for better system. Uh, that's for the PH for better. So interesting, let's see what's inside. Okay, one thing that I see in here that I really do like that was in the uh, starter set is they've got these cool little tabby things that make it easier to, to pull the books out. You know, one of the things that uh, back in the day you would do with uh, older box sets, like you said, I should set a frame right now, but I got a couple of old uh, TSR box sets up there that are pretty beaten to hell. And uh, those things got beaten up largely because I'm trying to jam your fingers in there trying to get the books out. This has a, a pretty cool little tie that you can just pull and, and get all your books out. Uh, the starter set has something like that as well. So as advertised, there are three big uh, maps in here. And these, feel identical to the maps that were in the Pirates of Drenax uh, book. I'm not going to go into uh, open all of them, or rather the uh, Pirates of Drenax uh, box set, uh, in that the paper they use in this is a little thicker cardstock, uh, but flexible, uh, and it's got some kind of nice finish on it. So it's, oh, that's kind of cool. So take a look at this. This must be the sector or the system that they were talking about. Whoa, look at that sucker. Wow. So there's that big system. It looks like it's a binary system. There's two uh, suns that are going on. Sorry, I'm trying to get this in frame here. There you go. Two things. Whew. And there is the sector map. Wow. So there's something called the Great Reef right in the middle there. And I really want to know what that is. That's uh, cool. Okay, so this is the uh, one of the three maps uh, that are in Oops, the box set. The, uh, oh, shit. One thing that I, I will mention, too, this is uh, something I didn't note when I was doing the uh, Pirates of Drenax review. But one thing that they have changed between the editions, sorry, I'll get back myself back to the mic here, is um, on the, uh, the previous edition's maps uh, didn't always have all of the information that you need uh, about a system. 
on it. So uh, if you're not familiar with the um, uh, traveler uh, setting or, or system, one of the, the sort of shorthands that they were, they use is something called a UPP, which is a universal personality profile or planetary profile. Again, my book's actually packed up, so I don't know what, I, I can't look it up. But basically what it is, is it's a however many digit, like eight or nine digit code, and it tells you everything you need to know about that system. So like the type of government it has, uh, how much water there is on the planet, what the population is, what the, you know, um, what the tech level is, uh, whether there is a, a, a star base there or a starport, uh, and what the quality of that starport is. And uh, it's very handy. They have all of that stuff on each of the systems here. So at a glance, you can lay it open in front of you and see the little symbols there tell you whether or not there is a gas giant. So if you're looking to plot your your course here and you want to find whether you can make use of your fuel scoops to, to fill up your fuels without uh, having to go to you know an, an actual starport uh, that's kind of cool that they've got that there um the color coding means something as well too but i don't remember what it means uh offhand but that's one thing that that seems to have changed since the last edition and i really like that that uh that makes it easy to, to sit with the map open and uh, the upp guide and just sort of look through the different um you know the different things so that's there's three of those maps so it looks like it's going to cover at least three sectors which is, is pretty cool uh and then there are four books in here uh the first one is uh great rift second one is the reft which is a reft sector uh which i understand is the most heavily populated touchstone and the afawahisa and then the deep Splay, deep space exploration handbook these uh, feel, they're not hardbacks, they're softbacks, but they feel very sturdy. Uh, they're the same, it feels like the same printing, uh, same paper as in the starter set as well. So if you're um, familiar with that, or if you pick that up, uh, that's what you would be getting with this. Everything is full color inside. Whoa, this is neat. So already I'm flipping through the first book here. We've got some neat aliens that I have not seen before in any of the other materials. So that's kind of cool. Uh, one of the things that, that is neat about the Traveler setting is that it does have some very uh, well-defined kind of major races. There's, I think, six of them uh, in total, six or seven, maybe it's only five. Anyway, there's there's a certain number of what are they call great races, which are races that uh, established uh, interstellar travel on their own. And then there's, but the world, the uh, universe, I should say, is replete with a bunch of different species in it. But there's not a huge amount of, at least I haven't found in the material, there's a huge amount of material, a huge, huge amount of reference to them. Uh, but this seems to, to really, yeah. And again, someone who's more familiar with Traveler could maybe comment on that, uh, see if I'm wrong about that. But uh, lots of great, one of the things I do like about Traveler as well too, is they mix the, um, the interior illustrations with, um, there's not only you know like action scenes within then there are some really cool action scenes in the uh, material there's also great establishing shots that are in here that give you a sense of what the you know what the worlds are uh, are like so this is let's see here uh, just some it looks like it's general information about the uh, the rift itself uh, there are some ships in here it looks like uh, as well which is cool and then there are some guides to the different subsectors in one of the regions. Um, nope, uh, there's a military dirigible in here, so that uh, sounds interesting. Because who doesn't want to have a fight between dirigibles in their sci-fi game? Um, what else is in here? A bunch of more ships as well, too. Looks like there's a modified scout class in here as well, which is that uh, Reft Breaker on the uh, side there. Uh, so this is pretty much just a looks like a, a guide oh that's really neat too speaking of atmospheric art in here so this first book appears to be just a um a guide to the different um what do you call it? to the some of the subsectors in uh part of the rest so it's like a, a gazetteer the reft book appears to be the similar thing but with uh, the reft sector again there's some more the art in this is really beautiful. You know, I, I, I did flip through the PDF, but I, I forgot that some of the stuff was really, really nice. Makes it uh, easy to picture the um, the world. They've got some interesting stuff here. This neat hover car that's got kind of a 50s, you know, big body 
kind of feel to it. It's neat, kind of has like a 50s sci-fi feel to it as well. Um, what else here? There's agricultural, so more, whoa. Oh, this is a neat picture of a drawing. So the drawing are one of the major races that I mentioned as well. And they've got a the drawing have a, a link to the uh, the ancients, which are sort of like the um, the race that came before all the major races. And they're the ones who have this crazy advanced technology kicking around the, the setting. That is, I think, the coolest looking drawing I've seen. So I don't know if there's something wrong with that dude or different about him, but that is pretty freaking cool. Look forward to learning why he is the way he is. Oh, here's some more drawing too, with like um, debased versions of the drawing. It's kind of cool. And that uh, it looks like that subsector is called Lost Way. So I uh, look forward to seeing what that is. More alien races here. With a lizard man type thing. Which I think will be different from the drawing only because the drawing are kind of insectoid rather than. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Rather than um, lizard. So yeah, so this one as well. This second book just seems to have a, a really a ton of uh, information on the subsectors in the Reft sector. So it's at least two gazetteers you've got uh, there, or gazetters, I think is the correct way to say that. But ever since the original D and D books that were the gazetteers, I've called them gazetteers. So uh, if I have that wrong, you have my childhood spent playing D and D to play. Um, more monsters or critters to uh, encounter as well. Well, I'm here, this is the third book. This is Touchstone and uh, Falahisa. So I imagine this one's got more stuff to do with the uh, Aslan higher rift because the, uh, one of the features of the Great Rift, Great Rift, I should say, is that it's basically the reason why there has not been a full-on conflict to date with, between the Aslan higher rift, which is like a, I mean, the, to human eyes, they look like cat men or like lion men or women. Uh, they're these militaristic kind of like, if you think of like the uh, next generation version of, of the Klingons, that's kind of what the Aslan are, are presented as, or one of the ways you can interpret the Aslan. Um, the reason they haven't uh, come to blows is because there's this giant gulf of space between them. But this seems to be closer to the uh, the side where the Aslan Hyret is. Look at this, there is the Great Reef, that big purple blob that uh, was in that map that I held up earlier. So I look forward to reading about what the hell that is. Cause that looks pretty neat. It's huge too. Like the great reef is each one of these hexes uh, for those unfamiliar with traveler represents one parsec. And the farthest that uh, the, like I said, the ships can go is about six parsecs. It's six or seven. I think it's six, but this thing appears to be at least six wide, which means that you really can't jump past this thing. And there are no planets or star systems or whatever. That appear to be anywhere near it uh, but on the map there were two worlds or two systems within it so i look forward to seeing what the heck is going on with that um this otherwise appears to just be another gazetteer with lots of different subsectors in here there's some really neat alien looking critters in here as well too the art for the alien uh, like the non sentients are uh, are pretty great which is kind of cool so so go what do you call it? It's a cryopod, maybe, for somebody. So that may be one of those lost worlds uh, that they talked about. Oh, and this is interesting. Something called a flame train. That's cool. Pretty low tech for uh, travelers. So I'm, I'm going to guess that that's from one of those lost colonies or crashed ships or something like that. Uh, and then, let's see here. What else have we got? Yeah, and just there's, okay, so, I mean, one thing that I am noticing as I'm going through this, so each of these maps is a subsector in the overall sector. There are very few worlds in any of these, which I guess is what you would expect in the Great Rift, where it's, uh, you know, there are those giant gulfs of space between the different systems. But then, that, then you'll find systems like this, where there's, or subsectors like this, where they're just chock full of uh, things. There's another neat one, too. There's a steamship. So I'm curious to see what this, but that has, okay, so the steamship actually has a big cat or lion-like prow on it. So I wonder if this is a Aslan related thing. Hmm. Oh, looks like there's some crab people as well that are somewhere in here. So it's three books worth of gazetteers and guides to the subsectors. So the 
Traveler books that have been published to date for second edition don't really go into a huge amount of detail about what's on the specific worlds. Like it really leaves it for the the uh, I can't remember if it's called referee, whatever the DM is called in Traveler. Uh, it leaves it for you to, to sort of fill in as you you want whatever's on the world. It just gives you some great ideas to sort of springboard from. But this seems to have a shit ton of ideas. If there's you know this many books, each of these books is 104, 104, 112, 128. So that's, uh, what is that? That's 216 plus uh, 128 is um, 350. Uh, so 356, I think, or 350, so, I don't know. About 350 pages worth of information just on subsectors within the, the Great Rift. So that's a, a lot of material for your players to engage. And uh, I imagine you would um, really easily be able to run a, a sandbox style thing uh, the way that the Pirates of Drenax campaign uh, is run. Although for this one, it there's it doesn't one thing I, I that is absent from here that was in the Pirates of Drenax uh, box set is a um, is an actual campaign. This is just setting stuff. So there isn't a campaign to string you know all these different uh, all the different set systems and you know planets and whatnot uh, together. Uh, that would be left to you uh, to do that. And the final book that's in here is the Deep Space Exploration Handbook, which is this smaller little guy here. Uh, this thing is 48 pages, of which it looks like about half. So uh, 22 pages of it are more starships. Uh, and these are, it's a different art style. I'm not sure who the artist is. Whoever the artist was, they had for a lot of the original uh, books or the, the original core books for second edition. Uh, this is a different artist. I think that this artist actually did some of the material for Pirates of Drenax because there's there's one ship in it called the Ghost, which is a Zodani ship that sort of drifts around and spies on people and shit like that. And I think it's the same illustrator who drew that uh, as did the art in here. Um, looks like it's a mix of exploration and like uh, couriers. Yeah, I think so, um, which is appropriate for the, you know, the setting. Uh, and then the rest of the book is 26 pages just of exploring the, um, you know, the deep empty spaces. And the art in here is very evocative of that. Lots of uh, illustrations and paintings of uh, giant stellar event. Oh, here's another one there. Thing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, looks like there's some more information on uh, stars in here too, of how to sort of classify the stars and what the radius and whatnot is. Uh, and then there are some anomalies, rogues, and other objects expanding. Oh, cool! Expanded star system creation. That's that's cool. So that'll be interesting. Um, there's a random table for uh, objects found as well too. If you, uh, you're trying to, so I guess what this material is for is when you jump into a sector and trying to pick up stuff, there's weird objects that are drifting around in that empty space. This is what you would use to, to fill in that information. So that's pretty great. I love that. I mean, one of the things that, that makes Traveler a lot of fun to play is making use of the random uh, tables, both in uh, character generation and also in the course of play to, to introduce some sort of, you know, some random X factors into the, uh, the play and it's really cool to have a bunch of uh, extra opportunities to add that um, you know that kind of stuff in there or more uh, unpredictable stuff so this is pretty cool this is a much more um, in-depth uh, character or not character creation system creation uh, and then there is an expansion for the high guard rules which is the uh, starship rules for deep space exploration uh, that's kind of neat whoa I don't know what that is but that's Pretty cool. Oh, this is a gravitational shield. Look at that thing. Nifty. Um, so there is looks like there is some new uh, technology that you can incorporate into your ship. So if you're using the high guard supplement, uh, there are some rules in here that you can use to modify or uh, build uh, your starships. Uh, there's also some new software in here too, which is pretty cool because that can be pretty handy for uh, 
you're giving the players an opportunity to sort of specialize their ship uh, beyond just uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the hardware that's that's built in the ships, the turrets, the you know engines and whatever. So that's what's in here. It appears that uh, the contents of the Great Rift box set are a massive amount of new systems or subse uh, subsectors that you have to explore in three different areas. The uh, Rift sector, uh, then one that's just, I think, it's like from all over the Great Rift, and then one on Touchstone and a Falahisa. And then uh, some additional rules for the deep space, deep space exploration handling. So I will um, at some point post uh, an actual review when I have a chance to get into the material for this. And, I'll, and also, I mean, like, normally what I prefer to do is to take the uh, material out for a spin to, um, you know, to kick, kick the tires, as it were, and see how it responds. But what I'll do is just uh, in the course of my ongoing uh, Pirates of Drenax campaign, I will try out those uh, system generation. Uh, I did get one other thing today, too, because it came out. And that's the first adventure for the Great Rift. Uh, and I actually, I haven't picked these up in PDF yet just because my campaign takes place in the uh, Trojan regions. So, but I mean, I'm a completist and I really love this uh, game. So I snagged this as well and I don't know anything about it. So let's take a look at the back here. So this is the first one is called Islands in the Rift. And I'm going to have fucking Kenny Rogers in my head for the rest of the night. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Uh, in the Great Rift Adventure 1, Islands in the Rift, the travelers are sent to a mondiage uh, in the old islands subsector to pick up a starship. So simple. Their mission is to take it to Zul uh, Zuflucht uh, for transfer into Imperial space, quote, behind the claw, end quote, in Deneb or the Trojan Reach. However, the task is not simple. The ship is not sitting on a berthing pad at a mondiage. It is in fact on an entirely different world and not in a flyable condition. Once the travelers manage to reach the ship, they can finally begin their voyage across the island's subsector. This, too, is not a simple matter. The islands are prone to tension at the best of times, and at present, worlds in the region are on the brink of war. The travelers risk being mistaken for spies, and not without cause, for their ship is an imperial intelligence gathering vessel. The travelers will need to make a detour to collect a hidden stash of data before transit to Zulfukt, or sorry, Zulfukt, uh, and there are those who want to get their hands on it first. That actually sounds really, really cool. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you why. N not, I mean, like all that sounds interesting. It sounds like a fun adventure. But the thing I like is that it, like, there's good reasons for the players to engage with the, the setting then and for them to be the initiators of what they're doing. Some of the adventures that have been published so far do send, seem to sort of, you know, story happens and then the players are sort of brought along with it. There's not as much um, an initiative. And I don't mean to say that's that's most of them. It's, it's at best maybe uh, half of the ones I've, I've purchased so far. Uh, but the ones that I like best are the ones where the players, what, what the adventure presents is a situation and it's up to the players to sort of do whatever they want in there. So if what the players are going to be doing in this adventure is, you know, trying to locate this this uh, ship, trying to get it actually up and running again, and then to transport this across this, you know, troubled region. Now, that sounds pretty freaking cool. Uh, and it's a great way, I mean, if your uh, characters are not from the Great Rift too, it sounds like this is a really good opportunity to drag your characters into the Great Rift. So it's looking through here, I'm, I'm flipping through the uh, adventure and seeing what, uh, what we got. We've got two subsectors that are in here. Uh, the New Islands subsector and the Old Islands subsector. Uh, then we've got uh, Traveler's Briefing, and you got a ship right there. There's on the ship cover, and it, this is the Perfect Stranger, a modified, mm, I can't remember what the, uh, I think it's called a Fat Trader uh, ship. And then this is a Mondiage going there. And let's see here, more information for the DM. Uh, the route through old islands and new islands to get to from a mondiage to I guess where the ship is. And then incidents and then, okay, this is, I, I again, I haven't read this yet because I just picked this up. But one of the nice things with the uh, Pirates of Drenax campaign is that they give you sort of, um, they divide the different adventures into like events that happen and heists. So those are just clever ways of saying, 
things where external factors are happening to you and things where you have the opportunity to uh, to decide to interact with external things. And again, that's something I really like about uh, Traveler in general and, and like about a lot of these supplements is when it, it doesn't force the players along on a story, it gives them opportunities to chase things because they're cool things to do or they're, they're going to get them a benefit, like they get a ship, right? Or they get access to Intel and get more money for that or, you know, get a better improved relationship with the stellar, uh, with the um, uh, interstellar, uh, not the interstellar, the uh, third Imperium. Um, what this appears to be is just things like events that happen uh, in the course of this adventure that the DM can just drop in or, or not. That's awesome. I mean, that's great. Like, that's just, it's like having, um, you know, a salad bar of, uh, of, of an adventure where you can take in what you want and, and drop it in. Um, and then what else is in here? Uh, then it's the world that looks like where your uh, you find the ship, the perfect stranger. And then, oh, that doesn't look good. These are fighters. Uh, so not knowing what's going on, that doesn't seem like it would be good for, for our travelers. And, uh, hey, cool, we got some new equipment too. Special project laser weapon, which looks like a laser pen and a laser revolver. Hello. I have one player who's gonna love getting his hands on that. And then the opposition gives you the stats for the, um, looks like the people who are gonna be opposing you in this. So, yeah, so I mean, just to be clear, this does not come with the Great Rift box set, uh, but it's um, it's designed to, to be used with it. So, uh, and it's, for these adventures, it's adventure one. Uh, there is a loose connection. In, in the other series of adventures, there's been the Spinward Marches adventures, and there's been the Trojan Reaches adventures. The, the Trojan Reaches ones, at least I know for sure, uh, for certain, are chained. So if you do one, there's a reason, there's sort of a lead into the next one if you want to keep playing that way. So if you do want to play like a Pathfinder style adventure path, you can kind of do that with uh, with this material as well too. But one thing I'll say is the book, so the adventure seems to be you know quite small, but you get a lot more mileage out of these adventures than what you would from a, a larger adventure just because the there's not like keyed events in most of these. There's not you know um you go to this room and then you encounter this and you go to this room and encounter that like it's much more um it's much more fluid sort of like these are things that are happening in this setting and you can frame your adventure around that it may not be the best way of explaining it but it's uh it's honestly it reminds me a lot of the older you know, like D, D products right like where you would get a module that would be 32 pages but you would play for months and months and months using just that material like um the uh is it the hidden city of uh, whatever the fuck? Um, so what you can't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I'm not that much of an all star guy to uh, to really remember. But anyway, so that's what's out uh, as of the time of recording for Traveler now is uh, the Great Rift box set is uh, in the wild now in uh, friendly local gaming stores. And the first adventure for the Great Rift uh, series of adventures is uh, likewise out. So that's pretty cool. Um, so. As always, um, if you have any comments, questions, or uh, concerns regarding this uh, material, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, drop me a line in the comment section below, and I will endeavor to respond in a timely fashion. Um, well, price, I mean, how much is this going to cost? This is listed at uh, $69.99 uh, US, and I think I, play, I paid 90 Canadian, 80 Canadian? I don't remember. I bought a couple other things too, so I, I was kind of lost in the shuffle. But um, there is an awful lot of material in here for, for that price. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, well, I mean, I guess, you know, it, it's up to, to the individual as to whether they feel that is uh, a justified cost. Um, you know, I, um, I'm extremely enjoying my uh, Pirates of Dranax campaign. And like, we're not even in the Pirates phase right now. It's just, it's just been a lot of fun playing that, uh, some of the, the smaller adventures uh, that have um, been published for that particular campaign. Um, but the one thing that I, I'm a little, not, not to sad about, I mean, I love the story that's going to come for my players as we play through Pirate of Drenax, but I kind of want to just let them sandbox it, you know, like I, I'm kind of interested. There, there's a degree of that in Pirate of Drenax campaign, but I would be interested in just seeing them like, you know, travel around and seeing what they, you know, what kind of adventures they get into and not have a, an overarching story necessarily. Um, and if that's more what you were looking for from your game, it, from just reviewing what's in the uh, the material or the box set here, 
I bet you the Great Rift would probably be a better fit if you don't want that, uh, you know, that that overarching story. Now, it's not to say that the overarching story in Pirates of Drenax is a railroad by any means. Um, it gives you a great amount of, of freedom to do whatever the hell you want. And there's a lot of, there's certainly enough material in that box set to let you do whatever, you know, to run a, a sandbox style game as well, too. But, um, but anyway, that, that's something I think maybe if you were trying to decide between the two, uh, and you were leaning more towards like a, a sandbox style thing where the players are driven by their own, uh, by you know what they want to achieve in the fiction or in the in the world or in the game. Uh, this might be a better purchase for you than what uh, Pirates of Drenax is, but um, that but I do love Pirates of Drenax too. So anyway, um, I'm going to cut it off there because I got a pack. Um, again, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding this, uh, or or if there's other questions you have specifically about the. Uh, the Great Rift box set, I'm happy to uh, try and, and uh, respond to that. So please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I will see you again very soon. Actually, I have a very, very fun traveler, very long session coming up in a couple of days. So uh, if you are interested in, in uh, seeing uh, character generation and some actual play, uh, that will be posted to the channel uh, this coming weekend. So anyway, thanks all, and I will see you again soon.